So a good question just came up about troubleshooting. And uh, when you talk troubleshooting, it's of course, it's a gigantic topic. It is probably the number one reason people sign up for classes here is because they want to learn how to troubleshoot their instrument. That to me says the instrument doesn't always do what you want it to do. So how do we deal with troubleshooting? I like to teach a philosophy of troubleshooting. It'd be like saying, hey, tell me what's wrong with my car. Well, you gotta give me a clue. You gotta, let me teach you how to figure out what's wrong with your instrument. So a good example, um, let's try this for GC. Uh, a good example would be uh, your retention times have changed. Now, retention times are incredibly important in, in GC and in HPLC. The only way we can identify something is based on this retention time. So we have a certain window, and if we say if the peak comes off the window, it's the peak of interest. So let's say I'm doing forensic analysis, I'm looking for cocaine. If it's in the window, it's cocaine. Well, what if the retention times have drifted and another peak is in the window? Well, the GC is gonna call it cocaine because it doesn't know better. So drifting retention times are a huge issue. So what causes retention times to drift? Now, there's a hundred different buttons and knobs and valves on a GC, but it turns out that there's only two of them that can affect your retention time. Let's think about this. So what could possibly affect the retention time? One is the flow rate, right? How fast you're pushing the molecules of the column. What's the only other thing that affects retention time? Yeah, the temperature. So when someone tells me their retention time has changed, what they just told me was either the temperature changed or their flow rate changed. Let's figure out which one it is. Let's walk up to the GC and let's check the temperature. Is the temperature correct? Let's check the flow, put a digital flow meter on the back of the column, let's check the flow rate. One of those two things must be off in order for you to get bad retention times. Let me use that same uh, a, a problem in the LC world. This one's even more exciting. Because in HPLC, we've got a bunch of modules, individual pieces, and each one has a purpose. So when we have a retention time problem, again, what affects retention time in HPLC? Flow rate, absolutely, and solvent strength. GC is temperature, LC is solvent strength. So now I ask the question, which module in this stack is responsible for both the flow rate and the solvent strength. That's right, it's the pump. So when you have retention time problems, what you just told me is your pump needs to be maintained. You have a problem with your pump. Uh, I'll put it a better way. Um, if you have good retention time reproducibility, if you inject a standard 10 times in a row and get the exact same result 10 times in a row, then that tells me your pump is in excellent condition. I don't need to see any maintenance records. I don't need to see anything else about your pump. If you can get good retention time reproducibility, your pump must be in good shape. So I have a simple takeaway. How can I prove that my GC or my HPLC is working properly? Take a standard, inject it 10 times. Look at the retention times. If your retention time reproducibility is good, then you know your flow rate is good. And in GC, the temperature is good. In LC, the solvent strength is good. So that example is just one of many examples that we do during the class. Uh, but I wanted to give you this example to prove to you that troubleshooting is not that difficult. It's just a matter of uh, breaking it down into its simple parts and then asking the question, who is responsible for this problem? And then looking at that specific module or specific set of parameters. So that's troubleshooting in a nutshell.